Hey guys and gals, Compulsion Games here with some very exciting news. After a grueling Montreal winter full of wet snow, dry skin, and hard work, we're finally ready to present to you the Maiden Home Update for We Happy Few. This is the second major content update for We Happy Few, and we're so pleased to share it with you. We've developed brand new content and included some long-awaited community requests. So let's get to it. I am a golden cup. First up, welcome to the new weird and wonderful island of Maidenholm. This second village island very mysteriously appeared offshore, and with it, a bunch of new encounters for you to explore. Maidenholm is a significantly greater threat than any which you have ever faced before in our world. The encounters are more dangerous, more ridiculous, and everything I hope my granny never sees, for reasons that will be obvious to you. Also, Faraday and the houseboys have moved from the first village island to Maidenholm, so be prepared to work hard if you want to pay them a visit. Second, we have implemented playstyles. This is one of our most highly requested features. You now have a choice at the beginning of the game to play in one of three different playstyles. If you have been asking for us to remove the survival aspects of the game, then you are in luck. The new Birdwatcher playstyle focuses just on the quests and exploring the world, and you no longer need to eat or drink. If you have been asking us to make everything harder, well, you can now go full rage and select the Vigilante playstyle. Combat will be harder and survival will be brutal. Things are not going to be easy and the game will be punishing. Or, if you were happy the way things were, then you can continue playing on the downer playstyle, which is basically what we have now, just with a few additional balance tweaks. These playstyles have been designed to accommodate a wide range of different types of players. As always, we'll be looking forward to hearing your feedback. Third, in our first major world generation change, we added support for regions in the Garden District. The map is now divided between different types of areas, wilderness, abandoned neighborhoods, and small hamlets, each with their own resources and threats. This is the first in a series of large changes to our procedural system, and there's more to come. We hope the new regions will add even more personality to the ever-evolving world of Wellington Wells. Fourth, the shelters have been revamped and you'll no longer get these for free. You will have to face challenges in order to unlock each one. But on the plus side, once you do, it'll be just as safe as usual, and since the new shelters will introduce key mechanics useful to the game world, you'll be better prepared for the exciting new challenges down the road. Come on guys, it's for your own good. Fifth, because we are never short on finding ways to complicate your life, we added a bunch of different deadly features. The so-called toxic fog has been expanded. I'm afraid this puts an end to the easy night errands in the garden district or the village, while gently reminding you that ecologic catastrophe is probably more real than some believe. Please keep in mind that it is just prototype art right now. We want to test functionality and how it works in the world before polishing it. Meanwhile, our very own and never drunk on duty Wellington Wells police found ways to improve the security in the village district. No, they did not build a wall. Instead, we would like to welcome their new pet, the Peeper. It's a delightfully evil device that scans your soul for residues of joy. Oh, but isn't it just so gosh darn cute? Six, we added a buttload of options in the main menu so you can customize your desired playthrough. This allows playstyles and permadeath to be displayed all in one place as well as providing an option for multiple save slots. Speaking of permadeath, please note that it is no longer the default option. Many players were recklessly clicking through the menus without realizing what permadeath was. Now it must be a conscious choice, which doesn't take anything away from the permadeath players and will help us not get screamed at quite so much. And finally, we have a ton of stuff to talk about, but we're out of time. So here's the rest of the video condensed into five seconds. After so long working on our previous update, it felt really great to be working on all this cool stuff. We'd love to hear what you think of it, so come say hello on the Compulsion forums or on your most convenient social media. Until next time, happy update everyone, and don't forget to take your joy.